Hello, Aries. Welcome to your weekly reading for June 17th to the 23rd. This is for Aries and Aries Rising, and we're going to jump right into it, Aries. If you haven't felt it already, we're entering a new frontier. This is, I mean, the energies, the aspects that we've had the past few months really big shift really big shift but it's just like ah really nice it's like a starburst commercial okay the juice is loose uh if you get that reference let me know we kick it off this week as you can see mercury conjuncting venus okay as well as mercury moving into cancer and venus moving into cancer so mercury conjuncting venus in cancer so right off the bat we have a huge huge shift major major shift all right mercury conjuncting venus uh this is going to be very interesting all right you're going to start feeling just boom a lot of home energy a lot of home relationships family all of that all of that you know uh i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of y'all are doing things with their home redecorating beautifying it uh uh but also like really putting a lot of like heart into uh family and children and 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 significant others and whatnot uh you're definitely going to be moving into bear mode and when i say bear mode i'm talking care bear all right care bear mama bear bear Steen bears when I talk about home and family and and whatnot you're really gonna feel it with this emotional like capacity that is just so so strong intuition could be strong compassion can be really strong and this is you know mercury conjuncting venus so this is that charge and mercury and venus are sort of like tag teaming together to start this new chapter or this new story uh that's happening for you right now one that is uh again really 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 nice because it's this nurturing energy and that is venus and cancer so venus and cancer venus is going to be here okay venus is leaving gemini moving into cancer until july 11th so there's going to be some time with venus and cancer and venus and cancer is very 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 uh a lot of compassion a lot of patience a lot of protective energy but it's also matters of the heart matters of the heart uh the things that are moving you in this way that's very very just wearing your heart on your sleeve uh just feeling really good in that area uh really really nice a lot of loyalty energy uh like again protecting like relationships family home things home matters really really just vibing with your with you know your home atmosphere uh as i said in your monthly forecast venus and cancer there is this beautiful softness here okay it's this beautiful softness that feels like uh, snuggling in bed with your kids or your dog or your lover, whatever it is, whatever it is. Now, Mercury moves into Cancer at the same time. This is going to be, and Mercury will be here all month, okay? And you see how fast Mercury is moving. Mercury's been moving really fast. Mercury's going to be in Cancer all month long. And remember, Cancer is just very emotionally driven, okay? And so this is thinking and, and speaking with your heart, okay? Thinking and speaking with your heart, having that, uh, you know, speaking very intuitively, even even in this nurturing way, uh, just a lot of just like even uh, wearing your heart on your sleeve type of energy as well. So very, very, very nice. But again, you will feel it uh, very strongly and embrace this energy because it is, you know, for Aries, Aries are, you know, your fire signs are on the move, but this is that slow down energy. Even your ruling planet moved into Taurus, as I explained, you know, when that happened two weeks ago, and that is that it's slow down okay it is a slow down energy asking you to just really sit there and absorb all the beautiful things in your life and with it being mercury the planet of communication the messenger planet yeah write some you know love letters write a uh a, you know some some i don't know uh, to uh, ryan gosling whoever you want whoever you want it doesn't even matter but it is this poetry and motion kind of energy. So really, really love this. And then you see that we get to Thursday with the sun moving into Cancer. So you've got this army of planets in, in Cancer now. When it's so, so nice. First of all, welcome to the longest day of the year. It's officially summer and officially winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, but this is just... Uh, 
big, big day. And because it is the longest day of the year, you have extra time to really, really do what your heart desires and to, you know, feel that affection and that love that, you know, Venus and Mercury and the sun and Cancer is bringing. OK, and the sun is and this is actually a, a, a big thing. The sun uh, is uh, in the moon sign. All right. So the moon rules Cancer. And so really, really, you will feel this energy feeling secure in home, in relationships, family, uh, a lot of healing energy. Cancer is very feminine energy. So there could be this sensitive side of you that you're really, really connecting with. OK, uh, so do not be surprised if you see a baby in a stroller or a puppy and you just start bawling. I mean, that is like you are going to feel like emotionally moved during this time. All right. It really is this pulling at your heartstrings, wearing your heart on your sleeve kind of energy. All right. So uh, it, it actually and it can also be pretty, pretty. It can hit you pretty hard in the beginning of the week because the moon actually will be in Scorpio for the first half of the week. So that even amplifies that energy with that intensity that Scorpio brings. But uh, it with emotions, right? It's uh, Scorpio being another water sign there. So, uh, and it will be opposite Mars. All right. So, here's what's happening here. We everything is this kind of this fresh new energy we're feeling this week. All right. Uh, and it's air and water. All right. Jupiter in Gemini, fresh, very fresh. Jupiter in outer planet, slow moving. All right. So uh, also Pluto in Aquarius. And that happened early this year, but it honestly moved like a degree. Remember, Pluto is going to be in Aquarius for uh, 20 years now. So we've had these changes in the air signs. And now you have Venus Mercury and the sun moving into Cancer, a water sign, but then throw in Saturn and Neptune and Pisces, water sign. So there really is this dominant air water energy. It's very, very, very interesting because you have Mars, your ruling planet in Taurus, Taurus being an earth sign. So what I really want you to think of this, what's happening this week is think of, you know, a skipping stone on, uh, you know, the surface of a lake, all right? The surface of a lake dividing water and air, all right? But it's as if a three-year-old through that skipping stone okay it's just like boom boom uh so there's very little ripples <laughs> remember mars and taurus is that slow down energy uh and it's really really asking you know it, it's in a place where it's not where it's in your side anymore where things were like boom 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 and so think of it as in you know with the sun squaring neptune remember i talked more about these squares in neptune last week if you want to learn more about that but it really is is kind of like you standing at a vending machine and you've got your you've got your dollar dollar bill in the thing and you don't really know what you want your mind is saying uh kit kat your heart is saying the box of raisins so this is a time to remember with these squares to cut through that fog especially with neptune and pisces cut through that fog cut through the veil really trust your intuition right now to know what you want to know especially with all this heart energy to know what your heart truly wants at this time okay really really seek your truth all right because when you know, you will be satisfied. You will be satisfied. Um, and the other thing is on Friday, we have the full moon in Capricorn. So as I mentioned in your monthly forecast, a very unique one, this full moon in Capricorn is happening at one degree. We have uh, a full moon in Capricorn next month. All right. That to the same day. Okay. August 21st, full moon in Capricorn. So two full moons in Capricorn back to back. Very unusual. That one's happening at 29 degrees. Uh, so there is, so this full moon in Capricorn that's happening on Friday is just part one. All right. Part one of something bigger that may be coming to an end or having this turning point in your life. Now, Capricorn rules your 10th house. So something in career, something in career, fame, public recognition, honors, achievements. This is all 10th house matters. All right. And so, uh, and when I say fame, even if you're not here for career, it's just something that you're exerting a lot of your energy into that you want to be known for. So something, you know, that has to do with, with your passions, but, uh, Capricorn is structure. All right. Capricorn is structure. That's why I like this full moon, even though it will be squaring Neptune. I like this full moon because as long as you are honest with yourself, as long as you 
you know what you want as long as you are in touch with your higher mind with your truths you're going to cut through that fog you're going to know what you want and you're going to create this structure for yourself that uh is going to extend until july all right so uh keep that in mind mercury sextiling mars on the same day mars being your ruling planet really 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 nice okay this is something where uh you know it is this putting your mouth where your heart is energy all right this is very your where your ambitions lie uh this is very harmonious this is a you know an aspect that supports you in thinking and speaking and things that you're driven about around this time. And another thing, actually, with this full moon in Capricorn, uh, Saturday, the moon will trine Mars. And then on Sunday, the moon will trine Uranus. So it's actually a really, really good one. As long as you cut through that fog and you know what you want, it's a great full moon in Capricorn. And it is really prioritizing you know, the structures in your life at this point over the weekend, okay? And even having the breakthroughs that you need, especially with Uranus, remember the planet of breakthroughs. Uh, so let's get started, Aries. Let's see what's going on for you for the week of June 17th to the 23rd again for Aries, Aries rising, Aries moon. If you want to read for any other uh, placements in your chart, you're absolutely welcome to Aries. Let's do it. Let's see what's going on for you for June 17th to the 23rd. Now, Aries. I do a traditional call to cross spread. It really does offer the best overview, in my opinion. If we need to pull clarifiers, we will. You know we will. Aries. Uh, Aries fires. No? Yeah? No. Okay, I'll stop. Aries, secondly, y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for being here. Y'all are, uh, 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 you know I love y'all. And, wow, you are going to have a week Talk about breakthroughs. Talk about breakthroughs. I love what's happening here. This is really amazing. You're good. I have a million percent. Uh, you got temperance. Really amazing. I love the fact that you did get temperance. A lot of you are feeling a lot more spiritually active. I wouldn't be surprised with uh, you know Neptune being at 29 degrees. Again, if you want to see last week's reading, I really went into that if you didn't see it. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, balance. This is balance. This is, you know, patience is what I said earlier uh, with all that, you know, especially with Venus and the sun, uh, well, all the planets and cancer pretty much having that patience and really just enjoying the moment and, you know, have just a lot of that heart energy. Uh, home is where the heart is energy, but also what your heart desires. Now, temperance, like I said, there's a lot of patience here, knowing that the things that you want are happening and they're going to happen even if you don't feel it now knowing that they will and not stressing not worrying you know uh everyone's on a path everyone's on a path right and a lot of them you can even see the path here is that straight no does it curve and bend yes and so it this is just saying with the archangel here archangel michael saying hey listen i got you you're going to be fine don't stress don't worry about anything if there are any worries about how things are going to turn out in your future cut through that fog that neptune is bringing first of all secondly uh rather than uh, you know if you do have any like you know like ah what's going to happen focus on when what you want, when you get to the finish line, focus on that energy. Think of how good that will feel. All right. Think about how good that will feel. But this is a, a this is really great. This is merging. I And uh, what I really love about this is just merging that, you know, what's possible and, and, and what's, you know, uh, realistic and really merging the two. Uh, and that's what this full moon, that's what, you know, the Neptune aspects that's what they're all asking you to do right now, okay? Now, hey, boom, Ace of Swords in the heart of your spread. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna, you're good, you're gonna be fine. You see, you got two aces in your main spread. You're gonna be fine. Listen, Ace of Swords. This is having that breakthrough that I mentioned earlier. Okay, having that breakthrough. This is all. Of, it's especially remember, Swords are the air suit, the mental suit. So up here, you could have brilliant ideas this week. You could, um, you know, cut through the fog. You definitely cut through the fog. Uh, really, really sharp. Really sharp. Pun intended. 
no pun intended. Uh, but this is having that clarity, but also victory, success. Uh, this, you know, there could be some contracts that you may be signing. There could be some things that uh, come to mind for you that it's just okay. I know what I need to do, and I'm going to start doing it now. Aces, new beginnings, new chains, new opportunities, all right? With every full moons, full moons uh, illuminate, right? But they also bring, uh, like I said earlier, the end of something, a turning point in something. But what happens after a full moon, there's something that begins, right? And also this week, a huge shift, okay, into all this Cancerian energy. But you still all have, you still have all that air energy. Uh, but this is really great. This is absolutely amazing. I love the fact that you got the Ace of Swords. And by the way, Aces are changed. Swords are also changed too, okay? And so that's a lot of change that's about to happen, especially with your mindset, the way that you see things. Do you know why that's amplified? And I'm doubling down on that. Temperance is Sagittarius. That rules your ninth house. Ninth house is spirituality. It's your belief system. It's how, it's your philosophies. It is how, you know, your perspective on things. You add these two together, boom. Boom, you are definitely shifting uh, the way that you uh, uh, see things and really using that to your advantage and having a lot of power with of the mind, power of the mind. This is very powerful. The, the biggest sword in the deck. All right, now you have the 10 of swords in your challenge area. So it seems like there is something that is coming to an end in terms of how you have been seeing something, how you have been seeing something that could have been really hard for you. And this is the week that you have that major breakthrough. So this is, you know, a blessing in disguise. All right. The 10 of swords, the also the other and let let it go. If you're still having that moment of like, maybe something is like really challenging. It could be those Neptune squares, Saturn squares. They're together, both in Pisces and your 12th house, the subconscious. All right. But it's also uh, spirituality. It's also intuition, so using your intuition. But the reason I say that is the hand, okay? The man's hand gesture, the same as the hair font, all right? That spiritual, that wisdom, all right? So again, learning from those things that have been hard for you to have these breakthrough, breakthrough, really spending time thinking about those things to have this breakthrough, all right? It's breaking these chains free. Now, you have the nine of wands, all right? You have the nine of wands in your crown, so... How uh, uh, this is all about perseverance. This is not giving up. Uh, you could be thinking at this point, like, yeah, I've gone through it. I've been, it, you know, there could have been moments where you were really hard on yourself, Aries, as well, looking at what's going on for y'all. Uh, but you're not giving up. This is you. This is you uh, being on, you know, the both cheerleader squads in the movie bring it on. Like, nope, you, both of y'all want the crowd. So this is hanging, this is saying, nope, you can keep coming at me. I don't, you can, universe, you can throw me curveballs. These people can come at me. I've, I got this. I'm going to, nothing's going to take away my passions. Everything that I've worked hard for, you're good to go. Now you've got another ace. All right. The ace of wands. This is absolutely amazing. What makes this really amazing is that, uh, well, the fact that it is your second ace, right? So this is uh, really nice for you to have a second ace, but if you remember your last week's reading, it was in your final outcome, so it's already happened. Because now it's in your main spread, in the Riddier spread. And, you know, remember, I dropped these readings uh, many days before the actual week. So it could still be, you know, coming. All right. Really put your energy out there. But this is really great. So you could have entered, uh, you know, a new chapter in your life. There could have been something that you're really passionate about that you actually, you're like, I'm going to do this. I don't even care. This is how I'm doing it. I I'm, I'm really want to change my life now. Uh, and you could have felt that shift already, but this is saying that you're going through a big, massive change this week, and it's 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 serving you well because you got the star in your future. Now, the star in your future, that's your hopes and dreams aligning and the stars aligning for you. Uh, you're good. You're absolutely good. Uh, the star. Now, Okay, so this is really exciting because you know, the star is attributed to Aquarius. You can see the water barrier, all right? And Aquarius, remember, is uh, rules your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams, right? This is wisdom. This is fertility and growth and the things that you are, you know, hoping for. This is also uh, a lot of healing energy, but this is also faith. 
This is also faith, all right? Having faith and trust in the universe and yourself, all right? Everything is going to happen for you. You see the water bay here pouring, pouring on the land as well. And so, and you can see it's working. Look at that. Look how green the grass is. And so there's that fertility, that growth and something that's uh, blossoming for you in the direction of everything that you're, you know, dreaming about. Uh, and now I'm going to show you something that's really, really exciting here. You got the only two cards where they have a foot in the water, foot on land. All right. So what did I say earlier? It's that merging and even just, you know, making that connection between what your dreams are and the reality that you want to form them into. But having a connection in both areas, but also this Neptune energy will be really strong. So some of y'all may go really deep. You may go really deep, especially the first half of the week uh, with, you know, the moon in Scorpio. That's there's that intensity. It's your eighth house and get really psychological, too. But you could get really deep in terms of, OK, I'm so ready for this to be over or for me to be thinking this way or for uh, me to, uh, you know, I, I just want changes in my life. Uh, but all that action that happens, you know, the universe is definitely bearing fruit for you this week this is absolutely amazing all right now let's get to your stuff oh my goodness aries look at you go i absolutely love this for you um if you like this reading it'd be great if you like subscribe leave comments tell me what's going on what's going on in your lives uh aries and secondly uh you know i love y'all y'all are amazing and you know you still have the north node in your sign all year all year uh all right let's get to it Wow. All right. So we're talking big, big week for you. Okay. We're talking big week for you. I want you to get out of your head a little bit, but I feel like you're going to be, well, you're definitely going to be in your head. You are going to have this breakthrough, uh, but don't have this moment. There could be this moment during, you know, the full moon, even just, you know, when sun moves into cancer with this Neptune square cut through the fog cut through the fog all right now you have the nine of pentacles mm, hello very nice very nice you know this is someone who is uh just lavishly you know just uh, uh, soaking in all this abundance that she's earned okay she worked her way to this spot all right nothing was handed to her and so this is really great okay there's a sense of like independence here there's a sense of freedom here as well there's a sense of not worrying about you know uh like i said like the future or or or, or not having to worry about money like you're you're going to be earning your spot. You're going to be earning your spot. All right. So really, really take, remember it's the energy that you put out there. You always want to take action. Uh, you want to be the creator of your story, right? You, uh, create your own reality. So really, really, uh, know that you are moving in that direction. Don't stop. Okay. Don't stop. Look at all that harvest. All right. You even see the symbol of Venus all over her gown. All right. So, uh, looking at what's happening here, there could be a lot of things here, uh, in terms of, uh, relationships as well. Uh, you also have the eight of cups. I mean, so what's really great about this is that the eight of cups in your external factors area, the eight of cups is, moving, moving forward. It's moving forward. It's leaving things behind. All right. Leaving things behind, especially if you've, uh, had some sort of attachment with it. There's a sense of now I've got to make this big step forward, big leap forward, uh, in the direction where I know there's better things for me, greater things for me. Now I'm not saying like a lot of y'all may leave certain things. It's certainly a lot of y'all may, especially with career and, and with this full moon in Capricorn, uh, for something better for you. You, all right. Maybe even starting your own business uh, after, you know, even coming after Aries season, we had yeah, everything that's been happening recently. Uh, but there is this new direction is all I'm saying. And it could also be this new uh, or just even ascension. All right. So it could be even like in a relationship where you're just like, all right, now I've got something's got to change here. Something's got to change. Now, the other thing that could be happening. And by the way, this card is attributed to Saturn in in Pisces, Saturn in Pisces, like I said, is in, it's your 12th house. So a lot of this could be of the mind. A lot of this could be of the mind, leaving that, what I said earlier, something behind that you're just like, I don't want to bring this into this next chapter, into this next cycle, the way that I'm seeing things. I know that there's something that I have to face. 
I'm going to do it now. All right. Now, the other thing, it's in your external factors area. So there could be something that is going to be ending for you. All right. And it could be something, you know, that you're okay with. I mean, you have the ace of uh, swords with a star. It's, yeah, it could be something that you're okay with. But let me just clarify that for you. Knight of Swords, yeah, you'll be okay. You'll be fine with it. Knight of Swords is great. Uh, this is like that charge. This is like I can't even begin to tell you the fact that you have the age. Uh, listen, Knight of Swords is Gemini, first of all. All right, Gemini rules your third house of communication, logic, thinking, all of that, right? Now, uh, coming after the Eight of Cups, you have the Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords is bold, courageous. This is moving forward, right? The Eight of Cups uh, for something better. This is blazing forward, fearless, nothing can stop me now energy, all right? Especially with the way that you're thinking uh, and, and processing things. So this is really nice. You also have the lovers, really great. So yeah, something with partnerships, something with the relationships, but also there's this deep, this is like rich, deep, soul level love. A lot of y'all are seeking that now, all right? Now it can be platonic, it can be self-love as well, all right? Really, again, when I say this Cancerian energy, the all about, you know, the heart desires, there you go, all right, there you go. You also got the healer here, Archangel uh, Raphael. Uh, so a lot of y'all could be moving in that direction of healing with the lovers. The star, as I mentioned, is healing as well in your future, uh, which is amazing. And now you have the five of swords and your final outcome. So yeah, there definitely could be a point where there's almost like this tug of war up here, but it just seems like you are definitely going to be in a headspace. You're you're ready to let things go, but do it diplomatically. Uh, uh, do it in a way where you're not again that Neptune energy is going to be really strong. Full Moon and Capricorn is going to be very strong. Everything this week is going to be very strong. All right, so it's a big dramatic shift from the week before, all right? It's like night and day. And so with the full moon and Capricorn coming up too, remember you can feel that a few days before, a few days after. So there could be something this, uh, with all that Neptune energy, like what do I want? Is it this way that I go? So there could be a lot of that, but don't do it to a point where you're getting frustrated with yourself. You know, this card is all about self-respect and you know self-dignity. Uh, so really, really be in this headspace where you're opening up ways to move forward. Uh, how much time do we have? I'll do one more. I'll do another clarifier for you. Yeah, and then you'll be fine. Uh, you, the other thing is uh, there really could be, if should you find yourself at odds with other people, remember Saturn, Neptune, those squares that we're fresh out of and you're still feeling uh, some of it, uh, there could be something that in regard to someone else, it could be work related. Again, it could be something. It could be a friendship as well, because this card is an Aquarius card, the Five of Swords. And remember that it's your 11th house, which also rules not only your hopes and wishes and dreams. So you could be like, ah, which way uh, would I do? Or there could be something freshly new that you're doing this week and you have that breakthrough finally. Uh, but again, don't be hard on yourself. Uh, the 11th house is also like your social network groups and, uh, you know, you belong to. So there could be a friend that you just don't see eye to eye with. Uh, but you also have the queen of pentacles in your final outcome. Absolutely amazing. It looks like there is going to be a big shift in, you know, uh, 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 well, career is the big thing here. Career, you know, queen of pentacles actually is Capricorn. And so, uh, the 10th house matters. So there is something where you may be thinking about this big shift in your career, in your profession, how you are perceived by the public uh, leadership energy as well. Now, the other thing is the queen of pentacles is, well, she's the richest queen, but she has this maternal side to her. That's really giving. Okay. You can even see her hands underneath the pentacle. Okay. As opposed to the king of pentacles, who's owning his money. This is someone who's just very generous. Okay. With the people that she loves, with the people that are within her kingdom, with all of that, you know, and it's also this sense of growth and fertility. You already have that in your future. You see the little bunny rabbit hidden in the corner here. All right. So, uh, really representing that. Uh, so there could be this really big growth in terms of money and finances and whatnot. So really love that energy for you. And don't forget Mars, your ruling planet is in Taurus anyway, your second house of salary, income, money. So when you add everything together, a lot of career energy, but a lot of, uh, even if you're not here for career, like I said, 
your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, what you're exerting all your energy into. You're going to have a fantastic week. Just don't get too much in your head, okay? Don't get too much in your head, uh, but just definitely move forward in the direction that you know intuitively, this is what I want. This is what my heart desires. Uh, you're going to be great. Two aces, the star. Remember, you've got this mirror effect with temperance and the star. Uh, you're going to be absolutely fine. Thanks so much, Aries. Uh, next week, uh, we got oh, we got great stuff. We got great stuff next week. I love that Mercury trine Saturn. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if some of y'all signed contracts. Uh, all right. Uh, but there's oh, we have so many great stuff next week. All right. Uh, thanks so much. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments, Aries, and I will see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye bye.